So last week, we started by just touching on the love of God, reminiscing that love, reflecting on Easter, the true Easter being Jesus Christ himself. Hallelujah. Um, so we want to continue with our theme for this month, which is the love of God. Our theme for this month is the love of God. And we're taking our text from Romans chapter 5, verse 5. Romans chapter 5, verse 5. Please open your Bible with me and let us read Romans chapter 5, verse 5. I read. Romans chapter 5, verse 5. Now, hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. I'm reading from the New King James Version, and I take that again. Romans chapter 5, verse 5. Now, hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Paul the Apostle wrote this. A man who has very deep or who had very deep understanding and revelation of God, the mystery of God, the mystery of Christ, Jesus. So you can, you can pick a number of things from here. So one is the love of God. Number two is that it is poured out in our hearts. How? By the Holy Spirit. By the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is already given to us. And now if we go to Galatians, chapter 5, verse 22. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. There we see the fruit of the Spirit. And number one is love. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience. It continues. So we can boldly say that the love of God is manifested by the spirit of God that is in us. The love of God is manifested by the spirit of God that is in us. So love is a fruit or part of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. So, and that brings me to an, ex, uh, an encounter that I want to share with us. While uh, pastoring in the Netherlands, um, somebody came, a Dutch uh, person came to my parish then and asked me a question and said, um, I have this friend who is uh, gay and the person uh, is, is really in love with the same sex person that uh, uh, he or she was with and they are friends and so the person was asking me what I mean, isn't this really love? Is there anything wrong with it? As I always do, I will pray and ask the Holy Spirit to give me understanding and give me what to respond. Because the problem with the world is not because they don't know. It is because the God of this world has uh, blocked the eyes, the ears, the mind of the world. Uh, because the scripture we just read, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. It's so simple that you would expect the whole world will embrace that. But because the gods of this world does not want many to be saved, what does he do? He blocks the understanding. So many cannot accept that simple truth. Yes, so that's why I always ask God, what do I answer? So the Holy Spirit gave the answer to tell the person. So I simply told the person, I said, ah, they, they are in love. I said, yes. I said, ah, okay. Please give me some time and we will speak again on this matter. 
And the person said, oh, that's fine. So we met again in my parish and I had the opportunity of speaking on the love of God. Glory be to God, as we are here to discuss. And so by the time the Spirit gave us understanding of the love of God, the person came to me and said, now I understand. So question is, what love are we talking about? We are talking about the love of God. You see, that love is so different. That love is, is, is given by the Holy Spirit. And this is why I keep telling all that a Christian is a unique creature. There is no other creation of God, no other creature of God like a Christian. Because a Christian is only possible, one is only, can only become a Christian, is only possible for one to be a Christian by the Holy Spirit. It is not an act of human flesh. It is by the Holy Spirit. You remember what the Bible says in John chapter 1. John chapter 1, verse 11 and 12. Quickly, and we'll delve into, into love. But we need to get this background. John chapter 1. Let's, let's read it again. The Bible says in verse 12, but as many as received him to them, he gave the right to become children of God to those who believe in his name. Look at 13, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. But of God. So, the love of God is what we're talking about. And if you are a Christian, you have received the Holy Spirit of God, which is the only identity of a Christian, the only identity of a Christian. That is one who is like Christ, because a Christian is one who is like Christ, made in the image of Christ, not a copy. We are not copying Christ. Let's get this straight. I know for want of languages that, uh, and, and, and terminology, at times we make this mix up. We are not copying Christ. We are created by the Spirit of God, recreated recreated by the Spirit of God in the image of Christ. We are like Christ. That's what it means to be a Christian. I am making this emphasis because we are talking about love. And it's going to shake us out of the ordinary, out of the life we have been living. Because this is the highest form of life and the highest calling of God for us to live in love. Glory be to God. So I have come to provoke you and to provoke me to be who we are supposed to be, who you are supposed to be. God who created us is love. John, 1 John chapter 4, verse 8 says, God is love. And he has created us in his own image to be like him, to be love as well. Not just living in love and walking in love and practicing love, but to be love. Why? Because we have received the Holy Spirit that manifests the love of God in us. So if you are a Christian, you must love. You must love. And be an epitome of love. First John chapter 4, verses 7 to 8. It says, Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God. He that does not love 
does not know God. He that loves knows God, for God is love. <clears throat> so to put this in context, let's look at Psalm chapter 36, verse 5. Psalm 36, verse 5. I want to read the English Standard Version. It says, your steadfast love, O Lord, extends to the heavens, your faithfulness to the clouds. Hallelujah. If you look at verse 6, let's continue verse 6. He says, your righteousness is like the mountains of God, like the highest mountains. Your judgments are like the great deep man and beast you save, O Lord. Let's look at that verse 5 again and, and just look at it deeply. It says, your steadfast law, your steadfast law, O Lord, extends to the heavens, your faithfulness to the clouds. How high is the love of God? How large is the love of God? How deep is the love of God? How big is the love of God? How great is the love of God? Take a moment and just reflect on this. The scripture here gives us, tries to put a dimension to it. But you can tell that it is absolutely dimensionless. It is absolutely infinite. It says, your steadfast love, O Lord, extends to the heavens. Just try to picture that. Extends to the heavens. So the psalmist was trying to put a dimension to it, to God's love, because this was written by David, and this is one man that enjoyed and experienced the love of God. And so he tried to quantify it, put something that can help him appreciate the greatness, the largeness, the highness, if I want to use that word, the depths of God's love. And he just says, your steadfast love. Number one, it is steadfast, never failing love. There is no break, it is continuous. There is no time of absence. Not because you slept and the love of God was away. Or not because you were awake, oh, the love of God was away. Not because you went outside, oh, you left the love of God at home. You know, some of us uh, who really are in love with our partners, our spouses, Sometimes we are out and you miss your partner so much, but that's it. That's how it happens to us human beings. But with God, his love is steadfast. It's continuous. Hallelujah. So he says the love of God is steadfast, continuous. There is no break, no absence. And number two, he tries to imagine how large, how great, how big, how deep, and he says he extends to the heavens. Wow, that God connects directly from his throne to us by his love. But now we even know better than that because by the revelation through the Holy Spirit written in the gospel, Jesus taught us, then Paul, the apostles, Peter, all that. You read the gospel, the revelation is that God is actually dwelling with us. Oh, what a great love. Glory be to God. God is dwelling in us, with us, and he is always for us. So the love of God is with us and is so great. Such love, as we saw last week, to just play back, that made him, God to give his 
only begotten son, Jesus, to die for us. Such love that made Jesus Christ with all the pains and pangs of death at Gethsemane not to give up. But he said, Father, your will be done. And he went to the cross and died for us. Glory be to God. That is the extent of God's love. Let's quickly look at Romans chapter 8, verse 32, which is the scripture I was just referencing now. Let's read Romans chapter 8, verse 32 again. Uh, Oh, glory be to God. Let's start from 31. What then shall we say to these things if God is for us who can be against us? 32. He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Freely give us all things because God loves us so much. God loves us so much. Jesus Christ said, greater love has no man than this, that a man lays down his life for his friends. Greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Great love of God. The love of God is so great. In that same Romans uh, uh, chapter 5, if we look at verse 8, it says, But God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The love of God. God loves you, brothers. God loves you, sisters. God loves us. So we want to explore deeply this love of God and to provoke ourselves to live in that love that God has given to us. So now let's touch on love itself. So what is love? <laughs> what is love? Commonly used word, used and abused. I would rank love as one of the most abused word in the world. Used and abused, and yet with very little understanding. If I would say use, abused, and confused with no understanding. So I looked at the dictionary. Let's start with the dictionary. And Merriam Webster Dictionary is an authority because I looked at several dictionaries and you may look at it yourself. You'll be ashamed what some dictionaries talk about love and how shallow they look at love. But Merriam Webster Dictionary did elaborate uh, discussion on love. So I'll go through a few that I captured. In category one of love, this key points made. A, strong affection for another arising out of kinship or personal ties. Strong affection for another arising out of kinship or personal ties. Example, maternal love for a child. So the love the mother has for a child because of the personal ties and kinship. B, affection and tenderness felt by lovers. Affection by tenderness felt by lovers. Are you a lover? As I speak to the men, I speak to the women. Do you have a spouse? Do you have a wife? Do you have a husband? Are you in love with your wife? Are you in love with your husband? If you are not, you're missing so much. Make up your mind today to be in love with your husband, to be in love with your wife, because it is such a lovely life to have. See, 
affection based on admiration, benevolence, or common interests. Affection based on admiration, benevolence, or common interests. Example, love for his old schoolmate. So somebody you've been having common interests with as classmate, you know, so you uh, typically have that uh, affection for the person, especially if you have become friends. Let's look at category two of the definitions. The object of attachment, devotion, or admiration. Example, football was his first love. So for some of us who love football, we used to play football and we continue and we are supporting uh, the football clubs. We are, we are in Africa and supporting clubs in Europe. <laughs> yeah, for somebody like me that is an Arsenal fan, don't mind that their performance now is uh, mid-table. I know they, they, they will improve. We still have attachment despite that uh, performance. So admiration, attachment, devotion for something that you just have attachment for it. So example that I have here is football was his first love. So some of us have attachment for it. I personally. Category three, let's look at this. It says unselfish lawyer and benevolent concern for the good of another. Unselfish lawyer and benevolent concern for the good of another. Example. The fatherly concern of God for humankind. The fatherly concern of God for humankind. Two, brotherly concern for others. And you know Hebrews chapter 3 verse 1. Hebrews chapter 3 verse 1 says, let brotherly love continue. Let brotherly love continue. Number two. A person's adoration of God. A person's adoration of God. So you could see the different categories of love as explained by a Marian, Marian Webster dictionary. And you can Google this. I also put this note out for us. So we see when we're talking about the love of God, we should understand. This is the highest form of love and is the highest form of life. I know there are people who are used to all those descriptions of eros, filial, and then agape. Okay, so yes, that's what we're talking about here. The love of God. And we have been made to share that love. That's the difference in this teaching. We have been share that love, but many have refused to live that life. The Holy Spirit has been given to us. So Romans chapter 5, verse 5 says, now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Who was given to us? Have you received the Holy Spirit? Then that love has been given to you. Praise the name of the Lord. So we have the potential, the capacity by the Holy Spirit to experience, to live and experience this highest form of life, which is the life of God, for God is love. This is where the study will be dealing and going deeper into. Praise the name of the Lord. At this point, let me share the screen, uh, my screen with us to connect us with the model that we have been discussing to now. Uh, but before I share my screen, 
let me recap the uh, this the, the the Bible portion of Luke chapter ten verse twenty seven to bring this hope how we connect with the love of God and then I will share the model that we have been sharing B R R B L to make simple and clear which is our mission. So in Luke chapter 10, verse 27, a lawyer, if you remember, came to Jesus and asked him and said, what shall I do to have eternal life? What shall I do to have eternal life? And you remember what Jesus answered him. Maybe we go there right away. Let's look at verse 25. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tested him, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Verse uh, 26. He said to him, What is written in the law? What is your reading? 27, which is where we are now. So he answered and said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. I call this HSSM heart, soul, strength, mind. So this reflects your total being both conscious and unconscious existence, visible and invisible, that you must love the Lord God Almighty with your entire being and your neighbor as yourself. So you see that this agrees with the model that we have been teaching, B-R-R-B-L. The lawyer was asking what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And you remember our model that we have been teaching, what God gave us to teach, is the pathway to eternal life. That the pathway to eternal life, I'll quickly share. How do we get there? B, R, R, B, L. So, belief, B-R-R-B-L model, provides a short step to eternal life and greater victory while we are here on earth. And our focus must be to work closely with the Holy Spirit, our divine helper, to live this highest form of life here on earth. And when we fulfill our time here, translate into that place that God Almighty has kept for us to be with him forever. Glory be to God. Just as that John chapter 3 verse 16 says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. So, B-R-R-B-L, believe, repent, receive, become. Then live, 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 and live. Glory be to God. The first B there is believe Jesus Christ, the Son of God, die for your sins. The first R, repent, confess, and forsake all sins and ask God for forgiveness of all your sins. Accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. The second arrow, receive the Holy Spirit by faith, by simply asking God in the name of Jesus. You've asked God if you have repented and you have given your life to Jesus, simply ask God, give me the Holy Spirit and believe and trust God to give you that he has given you the Holy Spirit. You have the Holy Spirit. Many of us have the Spirit of God, but we are not conscious of him and are not walking with him. So the second B there, become. 
you become a son, a daughter of God by the spirit of God. So you must believe God and his works as written in the Bible and inspired by the Holy Spirit that you have now received the Holy Spirit and have become a son or, do or daughter of God. The only thing that makes you a son of God, a daughter of God, just like Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior is the Holy Spirit of God that dwells in you, that dwells in me. And so by the power of that Holy Spirit and the fruit of the Holy Spirit, we live. So the last uh, abbreviation, the L, is live. You must now live by faith and love as you abide in Christ always, especially in this year, 2021. You must abide in Christ. So we are in this living now, living this life, this full life as a Christian, as one that has received the spirit of God. Last month, we dealt in depth with faith, greater victory through faith. Now we're going to the peak of it all, which is living in love. Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And that will be our last reference for today. Now we've set the context of this uh, teaching. First Corinthians chapter 13. So we understand the depths, the heart of this love. First Corinthians chapter 13, we'll read verses one through eight A and then we'll read verse 13. Let's look at it together. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could move mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. Verse 3. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. Wow. Let's pause there and take and just take a look. Look at that. Are these not the things that we do in the world? And then claim that because we do those things, we are doing love. Or at least it is a confirmation that we are okay and okay with God. Look at it. Let's start from verse 3 back. He said, and though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, all my goods, I give all I have to feed the poor. And though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. How is it possible that a man can give everything he has to another? According to Webster uh, dictionary that we looked at, how is it possible that a man can give himself to be burned and yet does not have love? Because the love of God is only possible by the spirit of God. So it is possible. That is what the world does. And give themselves a pass. I have done love. Yes, these works are good. Matthew chapter 25, they are good. God wants us to do it. But it is possible to do it without love. Look at verse 2. It says, and though I have the gifts of prophecy. So verse 3 is about the word generally, philanthropists 
who have done all the good works, use their billions to do good works. Excellent. It is indeed good. Please continue. But know that that work is not enough for you to earn eternal life. You must receive the love of God, which is Jesus Christ, and thereby receive the Holy Spirit that makes that love to live through you. I will go and round off with the definition of this God's love so we understand. So verse two now talks about the religious people, those in the physical church. You know, religious people have replaced the church of Jesus Christ with their structures all over the world. But thank God that God is making his elect to know that the church of Jesus Christ is not structure. There is no structure, no denomination, no religion that is the church of Jesus Christ. The church of Jesus Christ is every human being that has come to God through Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. Peter said in the book of Acts, he says, there is no other name given on, amongst men under heaven by which we should be saved. The only name that saves is Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And Jesus is building his church everywhere. You can't stop him. The church of Jesus Christ is spiritual, manifesting in the physical. And by the way, those structures are very good. Brothers and sisters, please keep doing those good work, but just help everybody understand that it is not the structure that is the church. The structure is the gathering place to enable the church, the body of Christ, do the work that it ought to do. So here it says, though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have the faith so that I could move mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. This is the highest form. So no matter what you achieve on earth, no matter what you do, both spiritual and physical, as we have seen, the highest form of life is love. Then we go to verse one. It says, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, like those of us tongue-speaking Holy Ghost baptized ministers of God, children of God, Lebrande Mekishan Tarabos, Liga Yila Makushan Takayali Lebrande Rebekizin Turima. After doing all that, if I have not love, I am a sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. So, what then is this love of God? We want to wrap it up here. So I want you to take time and read this First uh, Corinthians chapter 13 down to 8 and then verse 13. So I read from verse 4 now. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. It's not puffed up. Does not behave rudely. Does not seek his own. Is not provoked. Thinks no evil. Verse 6, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Bears all things, believe all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Verse 8, love never fails. Love never fails. You know, many people think love is weakness. No, love is power. Love is the highest form of life. So I've come to provoke you to love and to live this highest form of life. Jump to verse 13. It says, and now abide faith, hope, love. These three, but the greatest of these is love. So you can understand now the BRRBL model that God helped us 
uh, to, 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 to put together this a structure around the pathway to eternal life. Mm -hmm. And this last bit, which is living by faith and love and continually hoping in God and trust abiding in Christ. So this is what we'll be dealing with this whole month as God will help us. So finally, what is love? <laughs> This is the way I would like to define love. Love, love is the state of being or of mind or disposition to do only good to another person and no harm and without consideration of gain. It is the state of being or of mind or disposition to do only good to another person and no harm and without consideration of gain. This is only possible with total submission to God and adoration to him. That's, for me, the definition of love. We'll pause here and we will continue the teaching next Sunday. Beloved, let us love as God loves. For God, our Father, is love. God bless you. Thank you for listening. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity you have given us to hear your word today. Thank you for challenging us and provoking us and helping us to know this highest form of life, the life of love, to be like Jesus, our savior, who gave his life for us. Lord, we ask by your spirit, teach us, help us to live in love. And let the power of love manifest in our lives to reach all and affect the whole world. Thank you, our Father and our God. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. I pray for all your children who have heard this word and are saying, Jesus, I surrender my life to you. Please, by your mercy and faithfulness, forgive all their sins cleanse them and wash them and make them whole and pour your spirit upon every one of them that they may share and partake in this love. Thank you, our Father and our God. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. The Almighty God bless you, brothers and sisters, and have a wonderful, glorious week. Thank you.